our entrance antiphon. My deliverer from angry nations, you set me above my assailants. You saved me from the violent man, O Lord. <clears throat> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with, and with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. <clears throat> I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Let us pray. Enlighten, O God of compassion, the hearts of your children, sanctified by penance, and in your kindness grant those you stir to a sense of devotion a gracious hearing when they cry out to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. King Nebuchadnezzar said, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you will not serve my God or worship the golden statue that I set up? Be ready now to fall down and worship the statue I had made. Whenever you hear the sound of the trumpet, flute, lyre, harp, psaltery, bagpipe, and all other musical instruments, Otherwise, you shall be instantly cast into the white-hot furnace. And who is the God who can deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered King Nebuchadnezzar, There is no need for us to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If our God, whom we serve, can save us from the white-hot furnace and from your hands, O King, may he save us. But even if he will not, know, O king, that we will not serve your God or worship the golden statue that you set up. King Nebuchadnezzar's face became livid with utter rage against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He ordered the furnace to be heated seven times more than usual and had some of the, stro of the strongest men in his army bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and cast them into the white-hot furnace. Nebuchadnezzar rose in haste and asked his nobles, Did we not cast the three men bound into the fire? Assuredly, O king, they answered. But he replied, I see four men, unfettered and unhurt, walking in the fire, and the fourth looks like a son of God. Nebuchadnezzar exclaimed, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who sent his angel to deliver the servants who trusted in him. They disobeyed the royal command and yielded their bodies rather than serve or worship any god except their own god. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Glory and praise forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you, O Lord, the God of our fathers, 
praiseworthy and exalted above all forever, and blessed is your holy and glorious name, praiseworthy and exalted above all for all ages. Glory and praise, praise forever. forever. Blessed are you in the temple of your holy glory, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. Glory, glory and, and praise, praise forever. forever. Blessed are you on the throne of your kingdom, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you who look into the depths from the throne upon the cherubim, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you in the firmament of heaven, praiseworthy and glorious forever. Glory and praise forever. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. <clears throat> Blessed are they who have kept the word with a generous heart and yield a harvest through perseverance. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. O Lord. Jesus said to those Jews who believed in him, If you remain in my word, you will truly be my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham and have never been enslaved to anyone. How can you say you will become free? Jesus answered them, Amen, amen, I say to you, everyone who commits sin is a slave of sin. A slave does not remain in the household forever, but a son always remains. So if the son frees you, then you will truly be free. I know that you are descendants of Abraham, but you are trying to kill me, because my word has no room among you. I tell you what I have seen in the Father's presence. Then do what you have heard from the Father. They answered and said to him, Our father is Abraham. Jesus said to them, If you were Abraham's children, you would be doing the works of Abraham. But now you are trying to kill me a man who has told you the truth that I heard from God. Abraham did not do this. You are doing the works of your father. So they said to him, We were not born of fornication. We have one father, God. Jesus said to them, If God were your father, you would love me. For I came from God and am here. I did not come on my own, but he sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> what an odd, strange Lent it's been, right? Here we are in the, in the fifth week already, and many of us find it hard to actually practice our Lenten discipline uh, or to keep our Lenten promise because it just doesn't feel like Lent, does it? We find that there are times that the distractions and the confusion of what's going on in the world right now kind of make it easy for us to disregard or, or overlook that we still have a week and a half of Lent left. The current environment is so odd that today is April 1st and I can't even come up with a decent April Fool's joke or practical joke. So, sorry about that. Uh, actually, more fitting, you know, you're welcome. But here we are on Wednesday of Passion Time, these two weeks that lead up to our Easter celebration. And it's hard to even fathom that next week is Holy Week already. But it is, which means that there is light at the end of this dark, strange tunnel. The light of Easter is going to come. In a way, it can't come soon enough, right? 
Now, it may not bring a complete end to the seriousness or the anxiety of the situation we find ourselves in today, but it can certainly bring us some relief from it, right? And some relief is exactly what we need, isn't it? Father Cook and Father Boyd uh, have both commented in the past few weeks how strange it is to preach in an empty church. And I can confirm that, yeah, it's, it's a little odd. In a way, it's like I'm practicing in the mirror because I can see myself in the viewfinder of the camera. Yet I also feel like I'm preaching to the choir because the fact that you're listening or watching this broadcast of the Daily Mass says that you take your Catholic faith serious enough to set aside some time for worship, to practice your faith. And isn't that what Lent is all about? To strengthen our faith? To grow deeper in our faith? To come closer to Jesus in friendship? To draw so near to Jesus so that when Easter does come, our faith in the saving grace of his resurrection is strong enough that it brings us the peace and the comfort that only he can give, right? And our readings today reflect just that. In our first reading from the prophet Daniel, we hear of the three Jewish administrators in Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I love how those names just roll off your tongue. But these three refuse to worship the God of the king Nebuchadnezzar. And their faith is so strong that they defiantly tell the king that, listen, if our God chooses to save us from the white-hot furnace, great, that's awesome. But you know what? If not, oh well, that doesn't change a thing. That won't shake our faith. That won't change our faith in him. We won't worship you or your God. And for that, their faith is rewarded. God does save them from the fiery furnace, such that not a hair of their head is singed, their garments are unaltered, they don't even smell like smoke. That's a pretty strong faith. And then in our Gospel reading from John, Jesus tells us that if we keep the faith, if we remain in his word, we will truly be his disciples. And we will know the truth. And the truth will set us free. Free from sin. Brothers and sisters, our faith is what will save us. It is what will get us through this. And we will get through this. But we still have 12 days to go before Easter. Which means that we still have 12 days to strengthen our faith. 12 days to practice our Lenten discipline. And even if we may have slipped at times during Lent, that's okay. We still have time. I mentioned a little earlier that I feel like I'm preaching to the choir, which means that much of this message you already know, because you do. So to stretch yourselves a little further, let me issue this challenge. Use these next 12 days to bring someone else closer to the faith. Reach out and invite a friend or a neighbor or a family member or a coworker to listen in or watch the broadcast of these daily masses. They've got nothing else to watch. They've already binge watched everything on Netflix. But issue your own challenge to someone who you think may have, have allowed themselves to drift away from Lent. Let them know that Jesus is longing for them. He's longing for us. He wants us to know his peace. A peace that only he can give. It's a peace that will lead us through these tumultuous times. It's a peace that will set us free.
confident in our ever good God, we lift up our prayers and needs to him. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for Archbishop Lucas, Bishop Hanefeld, Bishop Connolly, and all of our bishops and priests throughout the world, may the Holy Spirit guide and strengthen them in these difficult times. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For President Trump and all of our world leaders, that they continually work to ensure the well-being of the most vulnerable in their care. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all healthcare workers, nurses, doctors, and first responders caring for those inflicted with the coronavirus, that they stay safe and healthy as they tend to those in need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the community of faith, may we be a beacon of light as we seek ways to minister to the sick, the lonely, and especially to those frightened during this time of crisis. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our sick, our poor, our homeless, our lonely, and all who feel abandoned by society, that they know the comfort and peace of the Holy Spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a swift and decisive deliverance from the coronavirus and every illness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those needs that we hold in the quiet of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear Lord. our prayer. And for all of those who have died, may their souls be purged of any impurities and welcomed into the light of God's love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, in these final days of Lent, help us to cling more closely to you and to hear all of our prayers through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Today's Masses are being offered for the repose of the soul of Mike Mooney and the repose of the soul of Andrew Abramson. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Oh, oh, oh. Sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive back, O Lord, these sacrificial offerings, which you have given to be offered to the honor of your name, and grant that they may become remedies for our healing through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them up, up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For through the saving passion of your Son, the whole world has received a heart to confess the infinite power of your majesty since by the wondrous power of the cross, your judgment on the world is now revealed 
and the authority of Christ crucified. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. <clears throat> you are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and, once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and George, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that, by the help of your mercy, 
we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, power and the glory are yours, now and, and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. On you stay, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. On you stay, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. On you stay. We told us peccat amundi, dona nobis pacem. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. communion antiphon. God has brought us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. And now acknowledging our physical sacramental separation from the Eucharist, we pray that prayer of spiritual communion for all of us. My, My Jesus, Jesus, I believe that you are in the blessed sacrament. I love, I love you above all, all things. things. And I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. May the mysteries we have received, O Lord, bring us heavenly medicine, that they may purge all evil from our heart and strengthen us with eternal protection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now we invoke the intercession and protection of St. Joseph. To you, you O blessed, blessed Joseph, Joseph, do we, we come, come in our tribulation. tribulation 
through that charity which bound you to the Immaculate Virgin Mother of God, and through the paternal love with which you embrace the child Jesus, we humbly beg you graciously to regard the inheritance which Jesus Christ has purchased by his blood, and with your power and strength to aid us in our necessities. O oh, most loving Father, ward off from us every contagion of error and corrupting influence. O oh, our most mighty protector, be propitious to us, and from heaven assist us in our struggle with the power of darkness. And, as once you rescue the child Jesus from deadly peril, so now protect God's children from the snares of the enemy and from all adversity. Shield to each one of us by your constant protection. Amen. Thank you for being a member of the choir for joining us today at Mass. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.